but also I noticed that in India, that infamous gang rape and murder of that girl on the bus, the perpetrators of that were released on appeal. So if they're not shooting women in the streets in Iran, they're raping and murdering them in India, and they're just examples that highlight themselves. So I want to get into this um, and really speak to people's um, the stories that will resonate with people watching. So who wants to kick off? Um, Kalyani uh, spoke a bit about her boarding school. Who would like to speak uh, next? And then you can kick off the call. Oh, Zara goes in and feel free to dive in at any point. Well, um, as you know, I was brought up in Iran. I just mentioned this. Now, Jonathan, one of the main problems that I noticed in Iran is that men and women aren't allowed to talk each other to, to each other from a very young age. Now, why is this a problem? We're creating division right from the word go, and it becomes this taboo subject. And when men can't afford to get married from a very young, you know, because they haven't got the financial stability or, you know, whatever that goes on, they they see a woman as an object and they find opportunities you know when you know that they are so I'll give you an example me coming back from summer school when i used to get pushed into the middle of the bus because the women had to get off at the end of the bus you know the, the the back end door and the men at the front and when i was pushed to the middle men used to rub themselves against me despite me wearing my hijab and my top to dome monitor and my trousers and everything which is why I say hijab is not covering up. It's about your behavior. It's about how you, you know, present yourself. And if you're waiting for opportunities out there, no amount of covering up is gonna make it any better. If anything, it makes it worse in my opinion, because it's a teaser, right? They're like, what's underneath that? I don't know what she looks like. Let's get hold of that. Okay, mm -hmm. so when I came to England, it was the opposite. When I wore a headscarf, that was what was getting attention. So I'm not talking about fitting in here, but here people assumed I was bald. That's why I was getting attention. <laughs> but I got less attention on a bikini on holiday than I did in Iran on a bus. And I think that kind of rests the case there. So that speaks very much to um, sexual assault, um, which I suppose is a kind of bullying insofar as bullies have a power dynamic over their victims and i think that's the common um denominator so if we look at our different stories that's that's horrific uh, zara and obviously what's going on in iran i just said we're recording this in november 2022 at the moment they're shooting and beating women in iran um and it doesn't look as if it's going to get any better so i mean let's, let's face it afghanistan women are getting raped there they have been for years it's nothing yeah. new yeah okay now that the focus of the media is on iran and to be honest women's headscarves been down here for ages i don't think it's about that i think it's about the fact they've been forced to wear something people are very irate in my opinion what i've seen out there there's poverty people have got two or three jobs it's like they're looking for an excuse at the moment and now somebody's gone off the women are kind of fronting it going i don't want to wear this thing but there's problems there's major problems in iran there's digitization you know elderly okay they can't get hold of their money they don't know how to handle their accounts my father's one of them and i'm not going to go into too much details right now they sell the same plot of land 50 times okay it's this corruption right from here right to the top and so women have just said right i've had enough i'm taking this off i'm making a stand and we have so many different um fractions of um policing okay there's three or four different tiers and there's been control in that country for years. This isn't. A 